<sighs> My name is James William Shinger, and this is Comfy Habit Number Two. Let me talk to you guys for a second. I'm gonna try to keep this as real as possible without offending people, which is not gonna happen. All right. So, to all you young people who are sensitive about everything, this video is specifically not for you. If you're not strong here or here and understand here, then you should probably go. Because this is basically a recap of everything that I have put up except for the thing about my nieces because that's self-explanatory if you see my hair. America was built on the back of immigrants. America was stolen from Native Americans. And I said stolen. I didn't say peaceful negotiation unless you count peaceful negotiation on the business end of a fucking musket ball. Alright? Because generally superior firepower and doesn't always win against superior intellect. Sometimes superior intellect wins against superior firepower. In this case, when America was discovered by the Europeans, they had both. They had superior firepower and they had superior intellect. And it branded from tribe to tribe, you know, as they suckered people into death and assimilation. A lot of people are probably going to say, James, you're being pro-Native American on this. You're damn right I am. Because technically now, if you're born in America, you're technically a Native American. Somebody told me that once, but they didn't understand what I meant when I said I was part Native American. When I meant I was Cherokee Indian. Alright, so, let me, um, let me put this to you guys straight. You are not supposed to hate someone because of the color of their skin. You're not supposed to hate anybody because of their culture. You're not supposed to hate people in general. I have said things that borderlines hate. Hate only spawns more hate. Now, before Donald Trump ran for ele election, I never had anything or heard anything bad about this guy until all of this stuff that started popping out of the wood like, just like Bill Cosby. Alright? Stunning stuff. Really, really stunning stuff. Now the thing is, you know, he, unlike Bill Cosby, who both have women popping out of the woodwork, he has video caught, you know, in the action of doing it. Bill, unless he pops up with a sex tape, you know, it's his word against theirs, but he has, like, 30 to 50 women after his ass, you know, and... Bill ain't looking like he in the best of shape right now. It look like the stress will kill him before he even gets to court. So if he dies before he gets to court, well, they don't have to worry about him serving any time or repenting or anything like that. Now, Mr. Trump, on the other hand, like I said, before I heard the audio tapes, before he ran for this, the only thing I knew about Trump was that he had been bankrupt four times. He was on the WWE and him and Vince McMahon had a war because rich people get together when they have problems and they set the stage so that everybody believed that Donald Trump was still rolling in the money. Come find out that he was not. He was just trying to pretend like he was buying the WWE, so he got a lot of fan support. For all you guys who don't remember that, you know, then you're probably not WWE fans, but I remember that because even Chris Benoit was still alive when all this was going on. Now, and I'm currently watching... The WWE right now while I'm doing this um this uh video blog I'm not trying to um promote hatred but I don't really like Donald Trump you know what I'm saying and I'm one of these people who just have to be heard but there are ways to be heard, and there are ways to be heard. This here is my way of being heard. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm in the privacy of my own room. I'm not causing any problems. And I can speak freely and say whatever I want to say. And I'm not slandering Mr. Trump. But it has been proven that he has been bankrupt four times. Now granted, I might have gone a little bit far with him pulling the magical alicorn or the flying unicorn out of his ass. I might have went a little far with that, you know. I might have went a little far saying that the devil is alive and he is the president of the United States. But again, I'm entitled to my opinion. 
and I have every right to call him a devil when he's gonna throw illegal, illegal immigrants under the bus. Not every illegal is a murderer or a rapist. And then he turned around and he married a woman who was not from this country, yet he doesn't want us to have the right to do the same, according to polls and statistics. Now, I don't know if that's really his view, but I know if I can't go find a wife in the Philippines, which I'm already working on, and I can't marry her and bring her home, he doesn't need to be my president. I come from Virginia. And there was a time when you could not marry a person out of your race in Virginia or in United States wide. And we don't have the right as a government to tell someone who they can and can't love. No, we don't have that right. Because love is supposed to be blind and ageless and boundless and timeless. And to come from a state where it was illegal for a white man to marry a black woman and vice versa... You know, these things are fucked up. And if him and a couple of anti-Americans want to make it so that we can't marry who we love and we can't go out of the country to find brides, well, here's the thing. The only reason why I have to find love somewhere else is because I can't make the person that I loved love me. I had to move on, and so I did. But here's the thing. You can't find love if you're trying too hard and you can't make someone love you. So you gotta go where you can go. And if I have to find love in another country, I should have the right to bring her back here to be my wife, to have in a hole until they decide that they don't want me anymore and go back to wherever the hell they want to go. Now, he has married a foreigner and he has a 10-year-old son with this woman. He has a beautiful older daughter and an older son or two that's going to be running the show. So, you know, I'm going to tell you like this. Our lives are in your hand. So while all of us are infighting over Hillary and Trump, we need to understand one thing. This is America. And though we can voice our opinions, we need to make sure that we're all together because the second that we blink, somebody from some country... We'll probably turn that knife that's already in our back, that's been in our back for the last century. And you guys want to fight over what's what. Well, I want to fight too. And this is how I'm doing it. Granted, I don't like Trump. Granted, I wanted Hillary before I wanted Obama, but I was misinformed on things and that's what happened. But I will tell you this. You know... As Americans, our First Amendment right doesn't stand for much if we can't speak freely without getting in trouble. And there was a lot of things on his ticket that did not float with me. A woman's right to choose was on his ticket to not be a right to choose, according to what I've been told. Now, there's always a smear campaign, alright? Always. I don't get paid to smear Donald Trump. I smear him for free. All right, because I did not vote for him. I don't like him, and I don't care if you do. I don't care if you voted for him. That's your God-given right as an American to vote and make a difference. What I care about is where we're going from here. Is he going to be mentally and physically capable of leading us down a path of prosperity, or are we going to get royally fucked? And I need to know this because I'm 43 now. And if I live long enough to have children, I need to have a place for them to live and be comfortable and feel safe. Because I never got all that when I was a kid. I got the half-breed jokes, and usually they were from black people. I got told after a certain grade from my white friends that we couldn't be friends anymore because apparently their parents did not like people of color. And while they were in school, they just had to tolerate us until they got grown. I've been on the, the side of it from all different spectrums of each ethnicity in America, except maybe Mexicans. Of course, I'm not Mexican, but they don't know that. But they probably know if they're watching. The thing is, Native Americans. Mexicans are Native American. Mayans, Aztecs, Incans. The only Mexicans that are not Native American are the Mexicans who were born 
in Spain and are completely Spanish, but not being Spanish Mexican, just being from Spain. That means they're Spanish, they're not Mexican. All right, so let's get that correct for those who have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Pick up a book if you can still read. If they're still teaching us how to read in school, pick up a book. All right, on a for real tip, you know, there's a lot of things that go on in this country that is back border bullshit. You know, when Donald Trump won um, the white lashing speech, okay, that came up. I didn't hear it. So I can't con com comment on it or condemn it. I can't condone it or condemn it because I have white ancestors and I have black ancestors. And I have Native American ancestors. So honestly, I don't have the right to be a racist, but I do have the right to speak. All right. I have the right to speak. So we all have that God given right to speak our minds and our hearts. But we do not have the right to raise our fist to prove a point unless someone is trying to hurt you. Now, today, like I said earlier on my earlier video about the guy who flew down the steps and WWE forearmed the hell out of the dude with the megaphone in his hand, that shit was not respectful, that shit was not cool, and personally, I don't know if Donald Trump condones that shit, but if he does, shame on him. But I do know that Hillary and Obama have both made pleas to all of us who support them to just get on the bandwagon and roll with the punches. And that includes Mr. Sanders, who has also made pleas that we get on the bandwagon and roll with the red-headed ginger that's about to be in charge of our country in less than a month and a half. So, I guess our brand new year is going to start off with the ginger in the White House. That's right, I call him a ginger, because initially he supposedly has red hair. Or is it orange? I really don't know what color his hair is, and I really don't give a damn. I don't even know if his hair is real. I really don't give a damn on that either because I hope like hell that I never go bald. All right? I don't like it. I look like shit when I'm bald. My cat card says so. But you know, I'm here to hopefully make a difference with this. I'm hoping that you guys hear me out. I want you guys find your own opinion and, and say what you want. You know, it's your life. It's your opinion. I'm not going to change my opinion on you because you support Donald Trump. I don't have the right to judge you for what you believe in. That's not who I am. That's not what I've ever been. And that's not what I'll do. When I put those dog tags on. Every morning. To support the troopers. I was in Bravo. I was in golf. And Delta. And golf on the way back out. I have a new hip. And I am a veteran. Who technically is homeless. I live at home with my mom. I'm not proud of it. But a roof over my head beats living in the streets. I can't get arrested getting a job because apparently I get nervous doing the interviews or I talk too much. And I've always been my own worst enemies doing interviews and I've never been able to take a test to save my life. Now, the thing is, you know, that one piece of hair. <laughs> the thing is, you know, we have to look out for each other because we are all we got. America, the home of the free, the land of the brave. Why do people want to come here? Why do people hate us? They want to come here because they don't have the luxuries that we have. Even the poorest of the poor person here is better off than a poor person in any other country in this world. Except for in one case. In the case of us being injured and having to go to the hospital. Most third world countries, most countries in general, take care of their people. Hospital bills aren't motherfucking outrageous. We're here... In America, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter how much health insurance you have, the hospital bill is still fucking outrageous. You know, most middle class people try their best to stay healthy and try not to get cut or injured in any major way because we just can't fucking afford it. And then everybody's bitching about how high Obamacare is. Everybody's bitching about how they can't afford Obamacare, which is true, which we're no better off with it than we were without it. And I'm not knocking Obama because he at least attempted to find some way to fix the problem that should have been fixed way back in 1965. All right? If you think about how far we've come since 1965, since the Vietnam War, why the fuck wasn't there free health care way back in the 40s? What happened in the fucking, the fucking World War I, World War II, Civil War? Why weren't we thinking about health care way back then? 
Because apparently, I guess just like me, most of the politicians probably didn't think that we would live and get as far as we've gotten being the new country coming in with everybody who can see eye to eye from every other country in the world. There is one of us from every part of the world in this country. Now, unfortunately, we can't be like Canada. And I love Canada because Canada, they take care of their people. And hell, they take care of their guests. You know, you get injured up in Canada, you can be looked after. You know, they're, they're going to make sure that you're okay. Now, granted, you may have to pay a bit of an outrageous bill because you're a foreigner, but they're going to probably give you a couple of breaks because you're a foreigner. And foreign money and tourists help every country in existence work out. All right? I'm telling you. Every country has a tourist. Every person who wants to tour a country, I want to go to see the Great Wall before I die. If I get anything to do in my life, I want to go see the Great Wall. I want to stand on history. Uh, hell, I want to make history, but I want to stand on history. I want to go to Geronimo's tomb. I want to go to Bruce Lee's tomb or grave in Seattle, Washington. I want to see so many things that I don't have the resources to do because I, one, can't find a decent job that can pay me what I need so that I can work and play hard. And, you know, I want to be able to do stuff with my life that I can't do because I can't get a job to support myself well enough to make a difference. So, for all you people who don't support us vets, for all you who laugh, oh, well, you're not really a vet. I, I got the cat card and the veterans card to prove it. But for all the people who don't want to give vets jobs, but you just want to push us up to the front so it makes your company look good, you guys are full of shit. And we who have not voted for Donald, we want to know, are you going to make the difference? Are you and whoever the hell you're going to put in your cabinet, even though some of them are sideways racist, are you going to put them in a position where they are going to look out for the little people? Are they going to look out for the low-income class of people? People like me, who have barely a pot to piss in and a roof over their head. Are you going to look out for us? Or are you going to be a dickweed or a douchebag full of dick tips and just let it be however the hell you want it to be? I just want to know because, you know, we're all in this together and on some level or another, we all better get a hold of ourselves, put our big girls' panties on and our big boy panties on and whoever brave enough to wear that thong thing, you know, and, and, and grab a bull by the horns, and we need to all hold this bull together instead of trying to work against each other. Maximum effort. So, if that's not going to happen, I need to know. I need to know how bad are you going to mess up this world. No. America has been a pal of dung since 65. Veterans have been treated, mistreated, and mistreated some more. The guys coming home from Iraq and Iran. The guys before that in Desert Storm. My uncle served in Desert Storm. Both of them. And yet, no one's getting the just rewards because of a couple of shady backyard deals over oil. The president's not really keeping up to what they're supposed to be doing. All of them have been guilty on some level or another by not being able to do what they want. Or not being able to do what they need to do for the country. And most of the time, it's the people that we voted in with them that vetoes their ideas. When Obama got elected, it was straight up said basically to his face that we are not going to let you do your fucking job. Because they didn't think that he would get in there. And they also said that if he got in there, they would do everything in their power to condemn everything that he puts on the table. They would stop it. They would stop it. At the expense of Everyone else, they would stop it. But you're supposed to work for us to better the country, which is what he was attempting to do. But yet, you guys didn't want more of the same. You wanted this change, and you're going to get this change. But is that change going to come with a heavier price than you were willing to bear? Probably. Probably not. But I don't know because I can't see into the future. All I do know that is I'm ready. And you guys need to be ready, too. I know that a lot of you guys on here who follow me or whatever probably don't like a lot of the stuff I say and you're just here to give me mercy. 
thank you. And if you're here because you're devoted, thank you even more. But I mean, I'm telling you guys, this world, without us all working together, we're fucked. So it doesn't really matter if you're on Hillary or Donald Trump's side. It really doesn't matter. Because if we don't pull our shit together and get our heads out of our asses, we're all going to die. Simple as that. It's not going to be like a massive explosion or anything. It's not going to be like violently. But we're all going to die slow, painful deaths because we can't get the fuck along. I'm going to do another video that has nothing to do with this but completely has to do with uh, racism and stuff. And, it, and it'll probably be tonight. So I just want to put you guys on, on note for that. We need to get our shit together. And I will try to keep that video under the 20 minute mark. Because this thing here is 20 minutes and 50 seconds that you probably will never get back of your life. For that, I apologize. This is Comfort Heaven number two. I'm James Williams Jr. Be seeing you.